Hey, welcome back. This is the second episode of the view camera movement. In this episode we'll focus on studio product shots. The studio has long been the perfect habitat for the view camera. It was used for almost all studio shots. A lot of great iconic advertising shots were done using view cameras. For a good reason. Or rather for good reasons. Bigger film, so better quality. Ideal control over composition, control over focus and perspective. Most of the reasons back then are still valid. So, why use the view camera today? First of all, for exact selection of where you focus. On your DSLR or mirrorless camera, focusing is simple. Pick your focus point, let your camera do the focusing and you're done. People tend to think they focus on a point in your image, but in reality it isn't a point of focus, but it's a plane of focus. On the DSLR or mirrorless, the plane of focus can be close to the camera or farther away, but it's always parallel to the camera sensor. Same as using a view camera without using the movements. Just focusing close or farther away is possible. The view camera can do more. It's possible to tilt the plane of focus. This makes it possible to focus at the foreground and at the background at the same time. For this you use the camera's tilt movement. We prepared an example of a crayon box that we want to shoot. The advertising agency emailed us a sketch of the required perspective and position of the crayon box. As you can see it needs to be shot from the front and the top to show the perspective. Everything needs to be tech sharp. So where do we focus? The front, the middle, the back? These are the choices a view camera user does not need to make. We, the members of the view camera movement, have our ways to get this done. We'll focus close, medium and far at the same time, without using extremely small apertures. Tilt's what we need. By rotating the lens in the horizontal axis, we put the plane of focus exactly on the pencils. This will result in a perfectly focused image, even without closing the aperture too much. We don't really have to rely on depth of field. Depth of field is always a trade-off. There's only one plane of focus. Everything in front or behind that is more or less out of focus. Using a smaller aperture makes the out of focus areas less visible, but they still stay out of focus. So, changing the tilt of the lens changes the plane of focus. It doesn't make the depth of field bigger. That's a common misconception. The depth of field is still only altered by the aperture used. It's more like you make the most use of the plane of focus by placing it efficiently exactly where you want it. Well, with this knowledge you still do not know how much you have to tilt the lens. But there's a help. Theodore Scheimpflug, the inventor of the Scheimpflug principle. Scheimpflug invented this principle for correcting photographs that were taken from hot air balloons when the camera wasn't exactly level. The Scheimpflug principle tells us that the sensor or film plane, the front panel and the plane of focus converge into one point. So if the rear panel of your view camera is straight up, the plane of focus you need is almost laying flat, this is how much your front panel needs to be tilted. And remember, you can also use the swing movement to change the plane of focus in the other direction. And you can even combine the tilt and the swing movement to rotate the plane of focus in both axes. The movement of the rear panel is important too. By tilting or swinging the rear panel you change the way the lines converge. Often it's said you can change perspective, but that's not exactly true. Perspective is changed by changing the position of the camera. Let's see what the rear panel movements do. 
We'll now shoot a square product, in this case a Rubik's cube, exactly square, and we want to keep it that way. Take a look at how the shape changes when we tilt the rear panel. But in order to keep it completely square, the solution is simple. Keep the rear panel parallel to the front facing part of the cube. And remember, when you change the rear panel movement, the plane of focus changes as well. Our friend Scheimflug can help you out in correcting that. <laughs> 